Fallon writes, I've not had good luck with sketches but wanted to try again. What I really need are sketches that incorporate multiple photos for vacation pictures. Glittergirl, can you help Curlin whip up a multi-photo masterpiece? Of course I can. This week I thought we would start by taking a look at some examples of travel pages and the variety of different photos you can include. So I start this album with a title page that includes just one single photo, but then there's a variety of different types of layouts. So there are pages that have um, are layouts that are double pages, so this one has four, four by six, and then there are also singles. So um, three, four by six works really easily and you can then add as much or as little to the remainder of the page. This page that's uh, part of the four by six photo love series for five four by six photos with one that's a different direction than the others. But still coming back sometimes to a single to have a bit more breathing room, repeating that idea of three across but with different um, embellishment at the top and bottom of the page. But of course you can also include more photos by changing the size. So sometimes printing them smaller or as squares rather than rectangles or mixing the size. So here there are two four by six but there are also, um, that there, there's also one larger photo that's more um, six by eight type size. This is also from the four by six photo love series. There are 12 four by six photos here in this big stack and they can be taken out at the top of the page protector. So you don't have to take out the whole layout. One five by seven, two four by six. Two four by six is the most common um, style that I use because it's a good balance for still having plenty of room for writing and some embellishment. This is also two four by six. There's a video on this one if you want to have a look. One larger photo with two smaller photos, just kind of changing the perspective. Things where there's more that I want to include in the writing might only go with a single photo. And then I also have divider pages. So this um, signifies a change in country during this trip. So all the pages you've seen so far were in Thailand, and then we cross the border into Laos. And so I add a page that just will normally just have one photo that's kind of a transition from one country to the next and helps tell the story so that you can see where we were going. But then two four by six photos. This one, which is from um, uh, an earlier Glitter Girl episode, so there are four four by six with four smaller photos. Just one here. This one has eleven because the addition of the the divided page protector in the middle gives room for up to six more photos. I used four and then had two spaces for journaling. That's also shown in more detail in four by six photo love two there, two and two, so you can see that two is, is a really common number in my layouts. Um, three but smaller photos, this one you've seen in an earlier Glitter Girl episode as well, so one giant photo and six four by six. Coming back again to that idea of three in a row. And it you're seeing blanks because partially because all of my albums are works in progress, essentially. I, I don't mind this. I know in my head that something goes here. And the reason I know that is because now I'm into a different country again. But I haven't made a section divider for this country yet. So I'm just leaving space there to remind me, remind me to do that. Uh, three four by six and one five by seven. Again to the two four by six. This one you saw a few weeks back, so this is just two smaller pictures that are Instax images, um, and then one large image that goes the full page width. And I designed these two not as a double page spread, but they are telling the same story part here and part there. And I thought that since these two images are so small that the one large image here, that it, it makes a good balance. Sometimes I just have a single photo. I don't have anything else that goes with that, but it's still an important story. So I don't have any problem just using one photo per page, even though it's in a travel album where I have stacks and stacks of photos. I took 9,000 photos on this trip, and my goal is to eventually scrapbook about 1,000 of them, which I know sounds quite 
mad. They won't all be in one album, obviously. I'm currently on three albums for the one trip, but there are whole sections of the trip where I haven't had the images printed yet because um, obviously a thousand photos would take an awful lot of room. Um, again, smaller images printed in squares, and then a new section divider with just one single photo. I like um, taking photos that are kind of my favorites from the whole journey and making them big uh, big images so that they can be appreciated even though they're in a book rather than on the wall. This one's actually on our wall as well. Um, just a smaller one. This one has three wallet size pictures and then one larger square so there's four on a single page. And then this last page here, which is also from 4x6 Photo Love, is a page and a half. So there's two here on the front, another two there, and four there. So eight over a page and a half. So there's a lot of ways to create pages that will let you have a balance of embellishment and uh, and photos and writing and all the sorts of good things that we put in. And don't feel that you have to cram your page with every single photo because there are other elements that are quite important. I often leave more room for writing because sometimes the writing for me is far more important than the photos. And um, so there's a, there's a balance to be found and um, you can have pages that include quite a few photos but still have a lot of breathing room. So this layout, which I discuss more in Hitchhiker's Guide, has a lot of breathing room around the edge but still includes four photos, still includes a lot of writing. So um, there's definitely room for balance and I don't feel like you need to look at a page and think, oh, just because I took a lot of photos means I need to cram every single photo on the layout. Don't feel overwhelmed by that. Um, but today I'm going to look at a one specific way that you can easily easily add more photos to your layout and create pictures that are that come together quite quickly and that's by the use of a certain kind of page protector. Divided page protectors come in all sorts of different arrangements and the two-piece store has stocked the American Crafts version for a quite a while which includes um, a design that's six portrait or six landscape and then um, the 6x12 with three pockets. But we've also just added um, We Are Memory Keepers page protectors to the store, so there are now lots of different um, layouts of the page that you can find. So there are some with squares, there are some with very small pockets, a big pocket, all sorts of different um, designs, and you can buy them separately where you get a whole pack of all the same design, or you can buy a mix so you get um, one or two of all different styles. So I bought the um, the variety pack and chose one of the styles for my page today, and this one has three um, four by six portrait spots, but then also has a six by twelve for the top half of the page, and um, that gives you plenty of room to put more photos to put journaling, to put a title, embellishment, all sorts of things like that. And that means that I can add um, plenty of photos to my album really easily because I won't need lots more um, embellishment and pattern paper for these three slots. So I'm going to start with um, some photographs that are, and this page is going to go in that album that I just showed you. And I'm going to use four photographs. So I've started by popping my three four by six photos into the pockets and cutting a cardstock background to six by twelve so it's just half a sheet so that I know everything's going to fit and I can get an idea for how I want to put the page together. And then I'm going to be adding one more four by six photo to the top on this um, six by twelve in the six by twelve window. And for this side I'm going to use these two papers and um, some of the mini patterns from the Jenny Bolin Red Black Extension 4 and um, this is double sided with all the patterns from that collection shrunk down to a smaller size. And then this handwriting style page which is the back of this one which is called Multiplication and it's also from the Red, ba Red Black Extension line by Jenny Bolin. So I'm going to use those on this brown cardstock background and even though this is a red and black line I'm going to be mo using mostly the, the cream and the red patterns so that they'll still mix with the brown and to make sure that they coordinate I'm going to use brown ink around the edges to pull that all together because as you saw in the album 
a lot of the paper is craft and there's um, definitely more a, a brown edge to the details rather than black. The lovely thing about working with just a 6x12 canvas is that everything will come together really, really quickly. So I've cut some journaling lines and I, I've just trimmed a little bit off the edge so that it's slightly um, narrower than the background. And then one of the 4x4 four four mini patterns so that I can break up that expanse of the cream paper there. And then I can add the photo in here and once those three elements are in place then everything else is just quite small things and, and all comes together very quickly. So I tend to use um, label stickers on pages with divided page protectors because it's easy to then add something to the smaller sections like um, right on top of the photos and I'll get to that section in just a minute but I'm going to use some stickers from the um, the hodgepodge this is the memo sheet hodgepodge stickers from Jenny Bolin and then I've also pulled out the boarding pass uh, word and label stickers from October afternoon along with some October afternoon letter stickers in there too So just by adding some layers around the photograph, I can pull together enough detail that I still have plenty of room here to write everything that I want to include. And the image is still clear and just depends on um, the content of the image itself. If there, if there were things that were important in that corner of the image, I really wouldn't want to cover it up. But because um, our, I've left the expression and the, the, the oddity of this so, uh, the Thai soda bottle in the picture, I don't mind covering up my cardigan in this corner because goodness knows that cardigan shows up in another dozen pictures in this album. So it's not a problem. But if, if there were something important in this corner of the photo, then I wouldn't want to place the embellishment there. But in this case, it works. And I've still followed the same design principles that I use in a larger page, but I've followed them on a much smaller scale. So on a larger page, I tend to put embellishment at two corners of, of the photo block and put something to the top right and the bottom left or vice versa so that your eye goes across the photo on the diagonal. And here I've done the same thing. It's just on a much smaller scale, one photo and a 6x12 um, canvas rather than the 12 by 12 page where I might have two or more photographs. With the writing added to the 6 by 12 canvas, the top half of the page is ready to go and I can go ahead and pop it into the page protector and that bit is all finished. But then sometimes it's worth looking at the other pockets to see if they are happy as just individual photos, if you're happy with them as individual photos, or you'd like to add something more to them. So what I tend to do is come back and add a little bit of a label or something small to a corner, and I try to alternate, so I look for where there are openings in the photo. So even though this photo is quite dark here, there's something here I don't particularly want to cover up, but this space is okay. So I could um, add a label here, and then up here I could perhaps put a round label in this space here at the top and then come back to the bottom and put something over in this space. So I'll just take those out one at a time, add um, the label and cut off oops, cut off any excess and, um, and then the whole page will be finished in not much time at all. But if you didn't want to attach anything to the photo you can add it straight to the page protector and put it right over the top which is um, which makes stickers especially useful because um, it's easy to attach them to the page. I'm looking to this section at the top for things I can repeat. So I use the washi tape here. I'm just going to repeat that as 
a little bit at the um, bottom as well. But what I found was that the width of the washi tape in this instance was a bit more than what I needed. So I'm just cutting the strip in half, layering that onto the photo. And then this is part of this border sticker, which I had cut in half. It was originally six inches long, so I cut half to use here, and then I've cut it into a few pieces that are smaller still. And then I can cut off the extra here. And then carry on to the next picture. I completed page with no more changes to the top, just the labels added to each of the photos at the bottom. So everything here comes together really quickly, yet there are four photos, and they're all four by six, on the 12 by 12 page, without it looking too heavy, too over the top, too embellished. And then I can just turn it over, add another three photos to the bottom, and whatever I want to the top, or I can replace and one of the photos or more of the photos with journaling cards, all sorts of things that I can do, but um, if you're looking for ways to scrapbook a big stack of photos and just have them all printed at the 4 by 6 size, you'll get a lot of use out of these kinds of page protectors that allow you to work really quickly and um, without, without a lot of extra supplies. Now, if you don't have these page protectors, you can still give our challenge a go this week because you can do the same sort of design on a 12 by 12 page. Just treat this as a sketch and use three photos along the bottom, embellish them in the same sort of way, and work with that top space of the 6 by 12 at the top of your background. And it'll look um, a little bit different because it won't have the gaps in the page protector, but it will still work as a design concept and it will still have that same principle of allowing you to get quite a lot on the page very quickly with out the need for lots and lots of other kinds of embellishments. You can add a title up here instead of a smaller title here if you prefer. You can add more or less embellishment as you see fit. I'd love to see your interpretation this week. Thanks for watching! Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.